I'm going to introduce Dr. John Carpton. And what I want to say about Dr. Carpton is he has the most incredible credentials. They're in your booklet. But I have to say that what makes him incredibly special, and you will hear when he speaks, is that he's not only a wonderful scientist, he's also a true humanitarian. He reaches out to so many people, not only in terms of myeloma, but prostate cancer, breast cancer, guess what? All cancer. And that is very much what we're about to. Some people have been saying, well, it seems like you're doing a lot of other things besides myeloma. Well, I hope you share my feeling, which is, when you have cancer, you have cancer. And it is a very devastating disease. So we feel that we can't just say, oh, we're not going to talk to you unless you have our cancer. We are encouraging research for all cancer because helping cancer and learning about cancer is going to save all of our lives and the lives of our loved ones. John is a graduate of Ohio State University, and you'll see when he comes up here. You played football, John. We know that. That's, and that's why you can fight all these diseases, because he's out there and he's a winner. And he's also the principal investigator with um, the one of the TGen, which is Translational Genomics Research Institute. And they have pioneered a number of innovative ways to study the underlying genetics of cancer using laboratory techniques. And again, using some of the terms you know, human genome markers. And that is what has been a major breakthrough in treatment of cancer patients. He's currently Senior Investigator and Director of the Integrated Cancer Genomics Division at TGen. His work is focused on searching for ge genetic identifiers that will act as predicators or predictors for prostate cancer and a disease whose incidence is three times more likely in African American men and six times more likely to lead to death in that population. He's currently leading the effort to conduct the most in-depth study of its kind designed to scan the genome, genomes of families with prostate cancer to identify genetic risk factors. And in addition to that, he's also working on adult hematological malignancies, particularly multiple myeloma. And again, this is very important, it affects a much higher percentage of African Americans and this is being done in collaboration with Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale in Agilent Technologies. And they're focusing on biomarkers. Again, trying to find out more why it's happening with certain populations. He's going to tell you more about his work right now with multiple myeloma. And I'm just going to go ahead and let John speak for himself. Thank you, John. tenacious um, at, um, you know, really trying to, you know, help bring, bring forth all these important aspects and, and making sure the community is engaged and, and, understands, and understands what's going on at multiple levels. Uh, again, advocacy and survivorship, pulling in the scientists, pulling in the clinicians, uh, so that everyone is informed. You know, that's one of the things I try to make sure is that everyone has equal access, um, that everyone gets access to all of the incredible information that's being developed. Um, uh, 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 on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, uh, TGen, and many of you have heard the word, I'm sure you might have seen it in the newspaper from time to time, we're a nonprofit uh, uh, research institute, biomedical research institute here in Phoenix that was started about six years ago. Uh, we're statewide, we have, uh, our headquarters is downtown, uh, around the Arizona Center. Uh, we also have labs up in, uh, uh, I mean, a building and labs in Flagstaff uh, that focuses particularly on pathogens, um, uh, uh, be it uh, things such as anthrax, uh, to things such as uh, bacterial uh, flora that uh, occupies diabetic wounds that won't heal, and trying to figure out you know better ways to treat those types of patients. 
And we also have a laboratory building here in Scottsdale uh, on the Mayo Clinic campus that houses, uh, in particular, the group here in Phoenix that really focuses on, or the group in Scottsdale that really focuses on uh, multiple myeloma research, although my labs are actually downtown. And, and that building actually was um, uh, provided to us through um, the assistance and the, uh, um, uh, of the Hornaday family. And they're actually represented here today. Uh, if you see a guy walking around and his name tag has Hornaday on, give him a pat on the back. Uh, because they've uh, uh, actually been one of our, our major uh, contributors here uh, as part of TJ. So, um, you know, to cut to the chase, uh, uh, I've got way more slides than I should be able to fit into a 15-minute uh, uh, time slide. And so I'm going to fly through these slides. Uh, every now and then you're going to hear me say a word. You may not necessarily get it. We're going to have a, a long Q&A session here uh, a, a little bit later. But don't get caught up in all of the hype. Um, uh, just try to catch some uh, little tidbits here and there, that's just fine. And then we can really uh, dig in deeper during the Q&A session. Uh, so my laboratory, basically, I try to approach uh, cancer and disease in two ways. One is uh, prevention, which is can we actually identify ways to prevent the cancer from occurring in the first place, right? If we could do that, you know, everything would be good. Um, so my laboratory has a, a, a strong focus in trying to identify genetic risk factors uh, that influence cancer risk. But then, but then there's the other issue, which is intervention. So once a person has already been diagnosed with cancer, how do we treat it? How do we deal with it? And a lot of, uh, again, I have a, a major focus in my research laboratory uh, where we're trying to identify the, the genomic or DNA alterations that are different between the cancer cell and the normal cell. And in many cases, that information can give us a, a really keen insights in how to attack those cells and how to kill them. And we try to take that information and exploit it. Also can tell us, you know, when we look at two different people with cancer, some people may have a cancer that really doesn't cause them a lot of problems, where another person has a very, very aggressive form of cancer. We also want to identify those differences so we can identify those individuals who have more high, who are at high risk for very aggressive disease, and it also, again, gives us more information on how to specifically treat those, those particular patients. So again, I'm going to try to fly through these slides. And first, I want to give just a little bit of background on some of the work that I'm going on at TGen, where we try to approach things uh, both at the research level, um, at the clinical level. We have a Scottsdale <coughs> Genomic Medicine Clinic here at Scottsdale Health. It's headed up by Dan Von Hoff. And we also play a, ba a very major role in, in uh, uh, advancing and improving uh, 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 genomic technologies. Um, we work in multiple areas, including diabetes and end-stage renal disease. Johanna Wolford heads that, that program. And I also want to apologize. I chose a dark slide background instead of the white slide background. Um, and uh, so some of these may not come through as clear, but, um, but please bear with me. Uh, Kevin Brown is one of the young investigators in my research division. Um, and uh, Kevin has done some outstanding work in the area of melanoma, not myeloma, but melanoma, skin cancer. Um, and has uh, uh, identified several uh, genetic risk factors to determine who might be at higher risk for developing uh, uh, skin cancer. Uh, Pam Pollock is another young investigator at TGen who's doing some phenomenal work in the area of endometrial cancer, where she's identified uh, uh, mutations in a particular gene, uh, and uh, she's working with one of the top 10 pharmaceutical companies who have developed a drug against this particular gene, and she's actually got this drug into a clinical trial with investigators at, at Washington University in St. Louis. And Dan Von Hoff, uh, uh, Dan is a, a world-renowned um, uh, cancer uh, uh, researcher and, and molecular oncologist who's um, actually, you know, uh, uh, one of the most driven people I've ever seen in trying to get uh, uh, new chemotherapies into people to help cure cancer. And uh, more recently, Dan is actually curing basal cell carcinoma patients uh, with a, uh, a new drug that was developed and, and uh, the clinical trials were done right here in Scottsdale uh, using a drug that targets a, a very important molecular pathway in cells called Sonic Hedgehog. And so they've got a drug that specifically targets that particular protein. And he's actually, uh, I mean, he's, it's, it's just amazing over a matter of weeks to see these tumors just basically melt away once they, uh, the patients go on this drug. And so my particular research interests are, are across multiple tumor types. Um, you know, we've had some um, uh, very interesting, uh, very cool successes over the last couple of years. Um, and, uh, but what I really want to focus on is some of the work we've done in, in, in the area of multiple myeloma. So myeloma is a plasma uh, uh, a cell malignancy of the bone marrow. Um, uh, it's a, a disease uh, uh, among, among our aging population, represents about 1% of all cancers, about 2% of all cancers.